Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and wow, we have a really cool lock to show off today. This isn't a picking video, it's really just a, uh, a run through, a description, a strip down of this brand new Boli Rotacera disc detainer lock. It's just been released, and uh, the Boli Lock Company kindly gave me this lock so that I could do a strip down and um, a bit of an overview of it for you. I uh, even requested whether I could have some like screenshots of some design files of the internals of this lock and they kindly sent those to me as well. This isn't an advert, uh, there's no control over what I say, um, but this was obviously sent to me, so I just want you to be aware of that under full disclosure. Um, all thoughts my own and I don't have any financial interest in the Bowley Lock Company. Right, all the boring stuff out of the way. What is this? Why is it so cool? Well, Bowley Lock are famous for um, just really doing out there lock designs, high security lock designs, just with really cool keys, really cool features. And not only are they, um, you know, especially in comparison to your, your average lock, uh, really high security locks. It's also loved by lock collectors as curios and, and lock pickers as those unicorn locks, a real challenge. And yeah, just, just really cool. Um, I, I, I really like what Bowley are coming up with and coming out with. And here is that Rotisera lock. It's actually in a, a key and knob cylinder format. This whole lock format means that it can be put into a number of different uh, bodies, whether it's like these mortise uh, cylinders or whether it's padlocks or, 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 or who knows what else, um, which is kind of cool. If we look at the key, you can see on here already you've got some of those uh, cuts on there. You see a bitting. You can see that some of these are low, some of these are tall. And you can imagine that because this is a disc detained, there's a pack of discs inside here. We will have a look at them. I'll try to strip this down for you. And when the key's inserted and it rotates around, you're rotating a pack of discs up to a point where a sidebar is able to interact with the gates in the discs, albeit in a slightly different way to what we're used to. Uh, and that's that's the kind of cool thing about this lock and why I wanted to show this off. Let's actually see the key in action. So I mean, we can put that in and you see already there's a spring, there's something called a pusher inside. It has a couple of functions, we'll look at them later. Uh, but you push that in, you turn the lock um, and then it, you hear a sort of a click and then the whole thing can be moved left and right. This is quite unusual in disc container lock, which are usually highly directional. But once this is unlocked, the whole thing will, well, rotate freely, as you can see. And then to unlock it, you sort of pull on, on it gently while rotating, you hear that click, rotate it upside down, and then it releases. And what's inside at the moment is somewhat of a mystery. First up, let's have a look at the features of this lock, which you can see from the front as if it was installed in a door. So what can we see? Well, we see the uh, outer mortar cylinder here. And you can see that the front plate of the kick cylinder is here. It's very nice and thick, which is kind of cool. Then you've got this little lozenge shaped thing, which looks like it's blocking the keyway, but isn't because the key is a section of a tube, I guess you could call it like that. And it just slides underneath, but it is the bit which provides that spring to um, the key when it's in. That is the pusher. And it does two really cool jobs, one of which is it keeps the internals of the lock um, aligned and stops them from moving about when there's no key in the lock. It actually protrudes into that front plate by a small degree. There you go, about a millimeter or so. And just stops everything moving about and misaligning. Also, I try and push it down from this side. It only pushes down so far. And that amount of space, you can see the brass bit inside. Um, that is how much room you'd have if you were trying to put the manipulation tools inside to manipulate uh, the disc pack. And the disc pack must be only manipulated <laughs> once this brass bit is rotated round. The brass bit is called the idler. And at this position, there are little tabs on the discs, which if you were to try to manipulate them at this position, they couldn't rotate round because that tab actually interacts with the idler at this resting position and they can't rotate round. This idler needs to be rotated round with the key so when this 
pusher is pushed down, you can see that you can rotate this idler with it. So you imagine if I have the key in there, it would be now at about uh, that position in the lock. That's when you can start to pick up the discs, which are going to start being here and rotate them around. The idler on the inside does another couple of cool jobs. And it's really hard for me to show that without uh, looking at some of the design drawings with you. Uh, so let's try and do that. But when the idler is rotated around with the key to its top position, what you'll find is it only allows a certain degree of manipulation of the discs. So each of the discs has a resting position with a sidebar uh, towards the center. There's false gates on each of the discs. And once you rotate it to the true gate, of course, then uh, if all the discs in there are aligned, the true gate would drop down and you'd be able to open the lock. But if you were trying to manipulate these discs and you over rotate them, there is no clear way of being able to back rotate those discs without having to reset the idler all the way back around to, um, to, to move the discs back. And then you'd have to start your manipulation of those discs all over again, or at least in theory. To get a real idea of what's going on inside this lock, I just think we need to take it apart and discuss it and uh, we can see how it works with the key even outside of its housing. I'm not going to lie, I'm slightly terrified of how uh, I'm going to be able to take this apart uh, and then, well, not so much take it apart as put it back together afterwards and get a working lock. But do you know what? Fortune favours a brave, so I say we just give it a go and see what happens. Uh, but I think there's going to be a lot to learn from this lock just by taking it apart. So take it apart, we will do. First thing I'm doing here is just take the tail piece off. Um, I'll depress this little pin and then hopefully we'll get it down. Yeah, I'll be able to unscrew this sort of knurled tail piece and remove it from the back of the lock. Take that bit off. Take this bit which interacts with the door latch off. And there we go. We've got to be very careful here. We can take this um, whole bit off, but let's just remove the, um, let's move all that out of the way. There we go. Take the whole kick cylinder out, move the lock body away. We don't need that at the moment. And then tip out the little spring, which goes on with the locking pin. Okay. So, so far, so good. Then we need a follower and that just goes in and it's quite interesting on the inside of this. Uh, oh, the retaining pins fallen out but that's okay. We can slide that back in. It only retains the back of the lock. It doesn't really uh, do a lot more. There we go, good. And that is the core on the inside. So it's actually standard. Um, inside here are springs with ball bearings. Ball bearings which push down on this uh, part of the lock. I'll, I'll show you that in a second. In fact, why not let's do it now. From the front, let's try to remove these ball bearings. And this is what they look like. And they, they just push down on the sidebar so they interact with the discs. One, two, three. And there is actually another cool feature on the inside of this, which you can see. This is where the sidebar sits along this groove here. It runs all the way down and you see where the tops of ball bearings would fit above these little brass springs, which I'll tip out for you. There we go. And then hopefully with these brass springs as the way, you'll be able to see better that groove, which runs all the way down the center, just here. That is where this sidebar sits. And you can see it's only poking up by maybe a couple of tens of millimeters but that is completely enough to stop this whole thing from rotating around. Right, let's have a look at what is happening on the inside of this when I actually put the key in. So again, I'll, I'll show you the discs in a minute, but if we put this key in, it goes into the lock, we push it down, it rotates around to about this position where it starts to pick up the discs, then it goes all the way to the top. And did you see that? As it moves to the top, the key pushes in a little bit more that actually means that once the discs are at the right height, then this sidebar still won't drop down till you push this key in. And what's happening there is there's a, and I'll take, I'll show you in a minute, there's a, a center cut on the key, uh, which is shaped like um, 
a little ramp and when that gets pushed in that actually moves the so imagine discs or the correct position when it pushes the key in it allows the, the sidebar to drop down it's it's actually a very cool uh, mechanism so it's all dropped down and what happens then is when I remove it the ramp itself pushes that sidebar up man like physically pushes that sidebar up so the reason why you push the key in at the top is to allow the sidebar to drop in to the space between the cuts on the key which move the discs and also when you pull the key out it physically pushes the sidebar back up again and out of the way so it sits above drops down you pull the key back out which uh, moves the sidebar up just by that ramp effect you have to put that ramp in the right way around otherwise the whole lock won't work either okay so let's try to do the scary part which is to look at the disc pack and see what those look like so there is the center part of the lock inside here is the spring and the pusher see if I can just see if I can remove those yep so together this and this form the pusher before I take the whole disc pack apart I thought it'd be wise to look at what's happening at the top of the lock as we open it you can see the top of all of the eight discs here there's a small groove running down here it's not really like false gates it's uh, just to center and locate the uh, v-shape under profile of this sidebar as I insert the key push down against the pusher and rotate you can see the discs start to pick up around maybe even that position then all of them start rotating as I rotate can you see that there are other little slots and grooves appear these are false gates they're not deep enough for the sidebar to recess until you get to there can you see that as the key pushes in those cuts are far deeper just look at that again and that is where so rotate it all the way around it goes in and that there is uh, the true gate those deep cuts allowing the um, sidebar to slot in you'll also be able to see that center part of the key with its ramp uh, right in the middle um, I shall just signify it with the tip of this hook here just there you can see that it moves out of the way and that allows that ramped tip of the sidebar to drop in there so you've got the uh, true gates the deep true gates all around there you move the key forwards and then um, obviously the sidebar will drop in so now the bits I have to be extra super careful of and that is to yeah try to remove this I move the brass idler that's what the idler looks like from the inside this uh, brass bit here the thing which helps reset the discs when you remove the key and only allows a certain degree of movement for the discs to turn I've rotated it around on the underside just a little bit which should mean that if I catch it very carefully I should be able to grab the disc pack as it comes out so let's see if I can do that there we go there is a little groove down one side where all of these little tabs must rotate can you see all these little tabs here so they all must align when you put this back in <laughs> to uh, this bit here so you can see it they, they go down and you've got discs and you've got spacers all right i'm going to try to do this backwards the back four discs uh will go there in uh in these positions and, and then towards the front so here we go pull that one off and last but not least we can see a disc in the front so I've left the first disc on the idler as if it was in its neutral position uh, with the sort of keyway open you can see that uh, that would be its open position and if we look over here you'll see that tab on the inside of the first disc and that's resting on that shelf on the idler which means that you can't really rotate that disc round 
until you rotate the idler, which gives it a bit of movement. So you can see that if we rotate it all the way around, then we have a good amount of movement there to rotate the disc round. If we look at the top, you get all these grooves. These are um, where the sidebar rests and also false gates. And the true gate, of course, is the deepest one. Uh, it's interesting that when it's all rotated uh, around this way, it's somewhat at the bottom and you to rotate at the top and the key rotate the disc round um, to its, its position like that. As I was saying earlier regarding what happens if you uh, we're manipulating these discs and you over rotate it to um, pass its true gate, for example, an overset. There isn't really a, a clear way of accessing uh, the disc unless you can grab it with some kind of friction to move it back without having to rotate the whole idler back round to uh, reset that disc position. Yeah, it was a really clever design, I have to say. So there you go, that is an overview of Bowley's new Rotocera disc detainer lock. Clearly, you know, a really uh, high security design. Um, very little room to manipulate anything on the inside. Uh, if you did manipulate it, it's very hard to sort of ensure that you're not oversetting things. If you do, then what do you do? You'd have to reset it. I'm just trying to think of um, so, sort of non-physical attacks. So uh, clearly any lock is um, prone to a physical attack, depending on how <laughs> how much of a physical attack it is. Um, but just thinking about this lock and the way it's, it works, I, uh, I couldn't think of anything off the top of my head that would be sort of an exploit or a bypass on this. Uh, there are, of course, greater minds out there than I in terms of understanding uh, the mechanisms of locks, how they work, and uh, you know how 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 we might be able to defeat them. But yeah, it's uh, it, it appears to be a really well thought through locking mechanism. I have to say, you can access the keyway with a key, which means that there is room to get in there with some tools, albeit. Um, you'd need some extremely finely crafted and machined tools, an extremely skilled operator. And even then, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible to pick this lock. Like I said, you can access the discs. Uh, but I, I think if you didn't know the key at all and you, you had to, to pick it blind, even with the right tool, I think it would pose an extreme challenge. Um, Maybe I'll be proved wrong and only time will tell. But I really like what this lock's trying to do. Um, I really like its form factor. I like the fact that it can be put into more familiar and standard uh, lock bodies and padlocks. Um, so yeah, I think I have to take my hat off to the Bowley Lock Company uh, for trying to do some innovation in the, uh, in the field of the disc detainer lock. Anyway, You've heard what I think. What do you think? Please drop a comment below to let me know your thoughts. I do read all the comments and I reply to as many as I can. If you like this kind of video, please do leave a like. Um, if, if you like this video and want to see more like it, then please consider subscribing. It really helps my channel out. And of course, I will see you all next time.